Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee, and today we're on the ice. And uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. No ice is safe ice. However, um, native peoples and explorers and pioneers have used the ice um, as a way to gather um, extra resources for, uh, for thousands of years. Um, so I thought I was going to do a video um, out here uh, and show you a little bit about the ice, some of the safety about the ice, and talk about uh, ice fishing, which is uh, the most common way to gather uh, resources out here on the ice. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, safety. And there's a couple things that you should have when you go out on the ice, in my opinion. And one is what's called ice spikes. And what an ice spike is, is it's a uh, sharp piece of metal that's on a uh, lanyard that hangs around your neck because if you fall into the ice, you're gonna fall into your armpits. And then you're not gonna be able to get a hold of anything to pull yourself up out of that uh, um, hole that you fell into. And that's where these come in handy. You take these, you jam them down into the ice and you use this as a handle to pull yourself up on the ice. Because without these, even if you're in only four, maybe five feet of water, you're not going to be able to get out of uh, the hole you're in. The water, of course, is, you know, 30 degrees and uh, eventually you're going to uh, succumb and you're going to slip under. And that has happened uh, around here where we're at. People have died in uh, very shallow water because they had no way to get out of uh, the hole they fell into. So these are probably the most important thing um, that you can carry when you're out on the ice. <clears throat> you can buy these commercially or you can uh, make these. Um, the next thing is a compass, a good compass. Um, because as you can see today, it's foggy out. So um, when you leave shore, you're gonna look at your uh, compass and find out what direction shore is. So you can follow that arrow back to safety. So uh, that is very important to have a compass with you. And if you're on a snow machine or you're on a, um, a four-wheeler or something like that, compasses don't always work that close to uh, machinery, so you have to move away from that to get a, a decent reading, just so you guys know that as well. Another thing, I'm going to show you my shoes here. I've got cleats on my shoes so I don't fall and slip around when I'm walking around out here on this ice. There's many different brands. The brand I'm wearing is Yak Tracks. Uh, they're kind of the premier brand. They're kind of expensive, but they're worth it. Um, one other thing that I got on my uh, my car hearts here um, is a depth finder. Um, after you drill your hole, you're going to uh, clip that on. Uh, your uh, fishing line, you're going to drop that down in the hole to find out what kind of depth of water that you're uh, dealing with. Um, another thing when it comes to ice safety here, while I'm giving my little safety brief, um, is the wind. Um, wind and ice kind of don't mix. Ice floats and the wind blows it around. So if you have a real strong wind, it's not really a good day to go out on the ice, especially if the wind's blowing offshore onto the ice because a crack can open up and that um, that ice flow that you're on, the wind will blow you out and you're not even knowing it. You're fishing and looking down your hole and all of a sudden your line goes and you're like, what's going on? Um, so that is something that you want to keep in mind too. Also, I'm on a big uh, piece of water here. Um, ice typically on a big piece of water is going to be more stable than ice on a river. So you really want to watch rivers. Rivers can be dangerous because of the current and uh, typically rivers don't freeze as solid as the big water does out here. Another thing that I'm going to show you right here, that crack is what's called a pressure crack. And pressure cracks form on the ice for different reasons. I'm close to shore here, so this pressure crack is uh, forming along the shore. The ice gets pushed in um, to the shore and it'll develop a crack. Now, sometimes these cracks can be quite large and actually they can pile up. And at that point, the crack is uh, called a shove. And uh, the reason they call it that is because the ice can pile up on top of itself and you'll actually have like a barrier. And uh, this happens at different points uh, throughout the year. Um, I'm actually gonna go out there into the mistiness a little ways. I'm gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna show you guys uh, kind of the basics of uh, ice fishing. Um, 
Ice fishing is probably the main um, thing that uh, people do nowadays out on the ice to use uh, the ice as a resource. It allows people that don't have a boat or anything to get out to different fishing spots that they couldn't normally uh, access. Uh, that they couldn't couldn't normally access the rest of the year you if you didn't have a boat or something you couldn't get out there But in the winter time you can just walk out there So I'm actually going to uh, get out there and then I'm going to uh, talk about a little bit about my gear And I'm going to uh, show you kind of the basics of uh, ice fishing All right, one more thing that I want to tell you guys about safety Ice fishing, going out on the ice, is sort of like hiking the backcountry You want to tell people where you're going and when you're gonna be back, because if something goes wrong and you get stranded out here, you don't check in, somebody can call for help. And that's uh, very, very important when it comes to ice safety as well. Now I'm gonna talk to you about my gear that I got here. I got basic gear. I got my bucket, I got two poles, one uh, modern style and one kind of uh, old school. And I got my ice auger. Um, to drill a hole in my ice. Um, another thing that I have here is I have what's called a skimmer. And what a skimmer does is when you have that hole in the ice, that'll refreeze if it's really cold, so you have to skim that ice out of that hole uh, from time to time. Um, there's two kinds of baits you normally use for uh, ice fishing. Now I'm fishing in the shallows here. This is just for small uh, pan fish. We're not going to get into the big water fishing right now out in the real, real deep water. I'm just going to kind of stick to pan fishing because it's uh, the safest and the most basic uh, thing that you can fish for. There's two types of bait that you normally use, minnows or wax worms. Minnows are a superior bait in my mind, um, but you have to uh, carry uh, the bucket, aerator, you got to have water in it, you got to keep those minnows alive. The other, not quite as good, but still decent enough, is what's called wax worms. And what wax worms are, are they're itty bitty grub um, that fish like, kind of like fish candy. Anyway, um, wax worms like to be kept warm, just like we do. So the best thing to do with wax worms is put them in a little container and keep them close to your body so they stay warm. Now, I don't have any tackle with me except a couple of hooks that I have in here with my wax worms, just in case I would snag one or something, and uh, my wax worms and the sawdust that they come in. Um, if it was actually a like a long-term SHTF situation, um, you would, uh, you wouldn't probably have access to wax worms, uh, but you could sain minnows. You could cut a hole in the ice and you could sain minnows or you could put down a minnow trap and you could catch minnows that way. Um, so even as long as you got a body of water nearby, you'd still be able to uh, get bait to do some uh, fishing with. So I'm gonna get my hole drilled here and then uh, I'm gonna show you basically kind of how to bait a hook and talk a little bit about ice fishing old and new. my hole. Now this is what you need the skimmer for. You clean that ice out of your hole, so you got a nice clean hole. What you want to do is you want to drill a hole if you're using an auger close to where you're fishing and that way your auger doesn't have to uh, um, lay down on the ice. It can stand up just like I've got it right there. Now we're going to uh, bait our hook. Looks like we got about, uh, I'm going to say a couple feet of water down there. We're going to uh, bait our hook now and uh, we're going to get a, a line in the water, see if there's anything in the area. All right, to start out with, I dropped my lure down there. It's not very deep water. I can see the bottom in the hole, so I didn't use my depth finder. Um, I'm going to start with my old school um, ice fishing pole here. And basically, uh, these old school ice fishing poles, um, 
were either fiberglass or aluminum. Sometimes they'd be split out of different woods or bamboo and a couple eyelets. Uh, one or two would be put on them. And then there'd be some kind of uh, basic uh, um, line holding device, whether it be something as simple as a couple of nails or a um, more of a bent piece of wire like this is right here. And I'm actually going to use what's called a Russian hook. And a Russian hook is a... Uh, flat stamp spoon with a hook on the bottom of it and I got a uh, wax worm on there for a little bit of bait this one happens to have a leader on so I could change those uh, hooks out um, fairly quickly and uh, basically all you do is take that guy and you drop it in and you're gonna want your uh, lure to hit the bottom then you want to bounce it a couple of times off the bottom that stirs up uh, the uh, the dirt and uh, the silt on the bottom and that kind of gets uh, the fish's attention, that vibration in the water and then uh, you bring it up just slightly so the fish can see it and now you just wait and see if anything's in the area. Now this right here is more of a modern pole set up with a reel on it. Um, this is basically like a miniature fishing pole. Now you're out here on uh, the ice, so of course you're not casting, so you don't need a real long um, fishing rod. Um, a small one uh, like this is uh, what they use. Now this is a uh, kind of a lighter action pole. This is more for panfish. If you were fishing for walleye or something, you'd use a much stiffer pole um, than what this guy is right here. But the advantage to this is that you got a lot more line. So you can fish in a lot deeper water with one of these reeled poles. And this is kind of a more of a modern hook right here. Um, it's just a weighted hook um, that's painted. It's not a uh, stamped flat spoon like those Russian hooks are. Russian hooks were kind of the uh, the old school uh, fishing lure that was used around here. They got, there's different companies uh, that still make something that's similar, but the older ones I always uh, think are better in uh, my opinion. While we're sitting here waiting for a fish, I'll show you my bucket. Now, all this is is a five gallon pail that I got a hole cut in the top of it. And you sit on this and uh, you can keep your uh, gear down in there or if you start catching fish, you can actually drop the fish right down in your bucket and uh, they don't have to lay on the ice so when you're ready to uh, um, go. I got a pair of uh, waterproof gloves in there and I got the cover for my uh, the ice auger. In there. Ice augers are very sharp. So whenever you're not using them out on the ice, you wanna have that cover on them. I don't know if you can see if I can't bring that uh, Russian hook up there. See if you can see it, the flash of it. You can see there when you're moving this, it kind of flutters like a wounded minnow. And that flash is what gets the uh, fish's attention. Now it's not even that cold today and I'm already getting uh, ice in my... Uh, in my hole here and you always want to keep this ice out of the hole because uh, if you do catch a fish it can snag uh, on that ice maybe catch you catch the fish and uh, maybe throw the hook then so you don't want to keep that ice in the hole so anyway that's kind of what a Russian hooks looks like fluttering around down there in uh, in the ice fishing hole I'll tell you guys a little bit of a story now um, my grandfather and his friend, they used to come out on this ice, and they would stay out here for three days, maybe even longer. Um, they would stay out here until they had enough fish that it was worthwhile to come back in. They would take uh, a wooden shandy on, uh, on wooden uh, skis, and they would slide that wooden shandy out here, and it would have a small uh, cook stove in it. They call them ice shandy stoves, and they would take wood with them out there, and they would start a little fire in there, and they would just stay out here, and they would fish, and uh, when they'd catch the fish, they'd uh, stack the fish out, uh, out on the ice, and they would uh, cover them with snow. And uh, they even would have a small uh, trap door cut into the uh, stove pipe on uh, the outside of their shandy and they'd have a piece of wire hanging in that and they would actually run a piece of wire through the gills of whatever fish they were catching and they would hang that fish in that uh, um, stovepipe and it would smoke and cook um, inside that stovepipe so they would eat the fish that uh, they were catching while they were out here and uh, it was a fairly common practice uh, back a hundred years ago to come out on this ice for uh, a couple of days and uh, fish and uh, take advantage of uh, this ice while it was here because typically the 
ice was only in here two to three months uh, a year. Another thing that they would do is they would cut uh, pieces of ice and put them up in the ice house. They would come out here with saws, the same uh, one-man, two-man cross-cut saws that they would uh, use uh, for cutting uh, firewood. They would uh, cut blocks of this ice out and they would put them on their sleds and they would take that in. Um, they would put it in the ice house and an ice house would be a kind of like a barn that was uh, had really thick walls and they'd pack that uh, um, ice in a sawdust and that ice would keep um, into the summertime so they would have a way of refrigeration long before um, electricity was uh, prevalent in this uh, area. Just wanted to share some of these old time uh, uh, stories with you guys and uh, tell you how uh, you know some practical ways that this uh, this ice here was uh, was utilized and uh, I think that it's important um, that we know how to use all the resources that are around us. So if you're fortunate enough to live in an area where um, the water uh, does freeze on the lakes, uh, just keep that in mind as a, a prepper and a prepared to minded individual. That uh, frozen lake um, or frozen body of water, that opens up another resource for you guys to uh, utilize. One other uh, safety thing that I want to mention, uh, a lot of snow on the ice is not uh, good. So if you see drifts of snow on the ice and you see a lot of snow piled up on the ice, you want to stay away from that because uh, sometimes what can happen is, is uh, there can be a skim ice uh, before the ice is frozen real hard. Snow can pile up on that and snow is an insulator. So it's going to insulate um, that weak spot in the ice and that's not going to freeze hard so uh, what will happen then is you're going to have a weak spot in the ice you think it's good because there's a little bit of snow on it you walk across it and of course you fall in so uh, when you're walking on ice you want ice that looks like that right there uh, you kind of want to avoid uh, these snowy spots or anything um, that looks like that. Uh, that is a, a hole that somebody drilled a, a while back and it uh, got warm and uh, the ice uh, channeled there and started to uh, melt back into that hole and then it refroze. So that is a weak spot in the ice and that's something you want to stay away from. So basically good clear ice right here is what you want to uh, you want to stay on um, when you're walking out on the ice. Alright guys, I uh, picked up and I moved uh, and that's the strategy that you use when uh, you're fishing out here on the ice. You're going to fish in a spot for about uh, 20 minutes, half hour and if you don't get a bite, you're going to pick up and move to a different spot and that's what I did. I moved out about another 50-75 yards and uh, drilled another hole. And uh, I'm in a little bit deeper water here. I'm probably in about four and a half to five feet of water right here, which is uh, good deeper water. Uh, usually means uh, more fish. Um, using the uh, modern setup this time that I showed you there um, a little bit ago, got it propped up on my uh, skimmer and uh, you can see the line there is uh, taut. So I'm just waiting for that line to uh, move so I can go ahead and uh, set the hook if there's anything down there. You can see there a little bit of uh, the white ice is on the top, probably down about two inches. And then there's probably about three inches of clear ice underneath that. You want about uh, four inches of ice to uh, walk on safely. And uh, I got about five inches of uh, ice here. And that's one thing uh, when you put your hole in the ice, you can kind of gauge uh, how safe that ice is. Five inches, I'm good to be walking around out here with a, with a bucket. Now, if you're bringing a, a snow machine or something out here, you're going to need quite a bit more ice than uh, this to support that uh, weight. So that's another thing that I want to mention. So if you're fishing in the shallows like I am here today, um, just walking out with uh, real basic gear, you want to have about uh, four inches of ice underneath you.
Well, guys, I'm getting ready to head in. Um, the wind changed directions, and it's uh, blowing off uh, shore now toward me. That's a wind that I don't like because... Uh, what that does is that actually blows the ice out um, away from shore and uh, that could be a problem especially if uh, pressure crack developed um, so gonna call it a day been out here for a while uh, did have a couple of bites but I uh, didn't catch anything that's why it's called fishing and not killing anyway hope you guys uh, enjoyed this just this little trip out here on the ice talk about ice fishing some of the ways that the ice uh, can be a resource and uh, just go over some safety uh, if you decide to go out on the ice. Anyway, this is uh, Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video, and you guys have a great day.